One of the inspirations for today's Stories from Storage episode is this box. It's a wooden box. It has handles on the sides. It's hinged. It has a lid that opens and closes. And before you ask, no, there's nothing inside. It has a big prominent keyhole in the front, but the lid doesn't actually have a latch, so it can't really function as a lock. The other strange thing is that it has these tacked-on strips of metal that make it look like an old-fashioned strongbox or treasure chest. But if you look closely, it turns out that they're just flattened pieces of metal that have been cut out of food tins, specifically from cans of Morel's Pride spiced luncheon meat. So what on earth was this strange object used for? Well, it turns out that Gloria Edenak, who donated this item to the UHEC, was able to tell us. According to her father, Michael Edenak, this box was a stage prop that was used in amateur theatrical productions at the Ukrainian American National Home in Chester, Pennsylvania, around 1930. According to family lore, it was made by Petro Livyak, a first wave immigrant from Ukraine to the United States, and as the story goes, he supposedly made it using only a screwdriver. Of course, we can't just blindly trust family lore. We all know that people misremember things. But regardless of whether or not this box was actually put together using only a screwdriver, there is absolutely no reason to doubt that this was, in fact, a stage prop. It makes perfect sense, and it explains a lot of the really strange features of this object. And besides, Michael Edenak probably would have been sitting in the audience for many of these theatrical productions. Amateur theatrics was a popular pastime for Ukrainian Americans in the early 20th century, and they were a staple feature of the cultural activities at Ukrainian American churches and community centers. For example, the Ukrainian Orthodox parish in Wilton, North Dakota, staged at least two plays in 1925. As was often the case, the plays were produced and directed by their parish priest, Father Joseph Zelikivsky and his wife Anna. The first, which was put on in January, was titled Matchmaking, and it might have been some sort of adaptation of the play Svatanya na Honcharivtsi by the famous Ukrainian writer Rehori Kvitka Osnovyanenko. Interestingly, the flyer is in English, and the performance happened in Wilton's Grand Theater. So, presumably, it was marketed to non-Ukrainian Anglos, as well as to Ukrainian Americans. But we have no idea whether the performance was in English, Ukrainian, or some bilingual mix. Just a few months later, they put on a play called The Prodigal Son. Again, the flyer is in English, and the performance was in the Grand Theater. The text on the flyer suggests that the play may have explored themes of conflict or friction between the Ukrainian immigrants, their children, and the dominant Anglo-Saxon Protestant culture that surrounded them. Some of the more sharp-eyed viewers among you may have noticed that this flyer is dated 1924, not 1925. However, like family lore, we should never take archival documents at face value. In this case, it's actually easy to verify that this play could not have taken place in 1924, because in 1924, April 20th was a Sunday, not a Monday. On the other hand, in 1925, it was indeed a Monday, and it also makes a lot more sense relative to the dates of Western and Orthodox Easter. So it looks like when Father Joseph wrote in that annotation that says 1924, which may have been many years after the fact, he probably just misremembered the year. A few years later, in 1930, and about a thousand miles to the east, the Bandurist Theater Group of St. Vladimir Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Cleveland, Ohio, participated in a series called the Theater of the Nations that was sponsored by the Cleveland Plain Dealer newspaper. Their first performance was in May, when they presented a work by the father of the Ukrainian theater, Marko Kropivnitsky. Like in North Dakota, the director was the parish priest, Father Gregory Chomitsky. Their second performance was in December with the play Forefather, Zabatka, or in its later title, Stepovei Hist, by Boris Hrinchenko. 
From period newspaper articles, we know that the play was in fact presented in Ukrainian with English program notes as well as an English language interpreter. Nine years later, and another 500 miles even further to the east, the Ukrainian Orthodox parish in Willimantic, Connecticut also put on a play. We know this from the parish's financial ledgers and parish board meeting minutes. Record books like these can make for some incredibly dry reading, but they can also hide some really interesting details about parish life. In the entries for March 1939, in addition to the usual boring expenditures for utility services, a coal delivery, the purchase of candles, and the priest's salary, there's also a $3.18 entry for the purchase of books for the play. And that would have been almost $60 today after adjusting for inflation. So what was this play? Was it some moralistic story like Wilton, North Dakota's Prodigal Son? Well, not quite. It turns out that the parish board minutes from the previous month note that approval was granted for the staging of a play entitled Strike, as in a labor union walkout. We have not yet managed to locate a copy of any such play by that title in Ukrainian, so we don't know exactly what it was about. However, it is interesting to note that there had been a major walkout in Willimantic at the American Thread Company only 14 years earlier, in 1925. In that strike, over 2,000 workers, including Ukrainian immigrants, walked off the job over a pay cut. In the end, the company broke the union by bringing in replacement workers. The impact of these events on the Willimantic community would still have been reverberating in 1939, and it's pretty likely that some of the parishioners who acted in or were in the audience for those performances would have actually been among the strikers. With the increase of alternative entertainment possibilities, like radio, talkie films, and then television, Ukrainian-American community theater became less and less common. But archival records and objects like this box remind us of what an important role it played in community life in the early decades of the 20th century. <laughs>